of Street Fighter 3. So we did it. We're getting there. Street Fighter 3s and all the encompassing that of which. It also includes Third Strike, the greatest fighting game of all time. But before that, comes a couple of entries that I feel so many people don't even realize exist, right? Everyone thinks of Third Strike and it's funny how you get impressions. Oh man, Third Strike's the greatest fighting game ever. And, it, and they won't even know that New Generation and Second Impact are actually a thing. So we started at New Generation and this is a fascinating fighting game overall, simply because Capcom was in a funny state at this point and so was Street Fighter. And this game tanked. It's it's no secret that Street Fighter 3 might have been responsible for Street Fighter potentially not coming back for potential like 10 years after this. It comes in not on arcades, and all I can remember is that nobody plays this machine. It has a giant three on it. It says T-H-R-E-E. -E. There's a picture of it in the game that we found, and such a weird looking game with weird characters, it doesn't even feel like Street Fighter. And I still think that kind of applies to this day. Retrospectively, you know, the Third Strike characters and the characters that come from later games really do feel like Street Fighter characters at this point. So, you know, our perspective now is very skewed, but when it came out, characters like Necro and Oro and Ibuki and, and the like, man, they were weird. Game was full of weirdos. And the only characters that brought the game and grounded it was Ryu and Ken. There was always these stories that the early play tests of Street Fighter 3 New Generation didn't have Ryu and Ken. And they eventually had to add them later on. And I was told this from people higher up at Capcom a long time ago, like 10 years ago. The original play test didn't go great until they even added these characters. But we literally found out through some interviews with classic Capcom staff, Street Fighter 3 New Generation was not even supposed to be a Street Fighter game. It was supposed to be something else entirely. We see the character concepts and what potentially was supposed to be in the game getting a lot weirder than it is. It, it almost feels like Ryu and Ken are kind of shoehorned into this weird ass game because initially it wasn't even supposed to be Street Fighter. So a lot of weird stuff was happening at Capcom at the time frame. They were trying to push this new generation of hardware. Their CPS3 hardware didn't get a lot of games on it. These three games are kind of the biggest ones and they were pushing for an astronomical amount of frames of animation per character. And yeah, New Generation is a beautiful game, even by today's standards. I don't like it as much as the later ones, but what they're pulling off here in terms of character animation, sprite work, and backgrounds is unparalleled in arcades around this time frame. They put everything into the visuals of Street Fighter 3 New Gen, and it honestly shows. It's really, really a beautiful game. Ibuki's close heavy kick is an infinite? Fuck you. What? Hold on a second. Like, is it a hard infinite? Now, the weird parts about New Generation is, and once again, it's hard to take our perspective that is from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, where everything is so polished and refined, and go back two games before, and we start to get some weird things, right? Some of the mechanics in this game are very funky. Parries really aren't even that good. <laughs> Parries are sort of weird and odd and they they don't act the way they should universal overheads are known as like a down down punch throws are classic throws going back to the street fighter alphas and super street fighter twos you press like forward and medium punch or heavy punch and the same thing with kicks and you'll you'll get opposite direction throws it's odd, man. So light punch, light kick wasn't established at this point. The mediums wasn't established for universal overheads. Everything just feels funny. And when you parry stuff, your character goes like flying away from each other. And it almost feels like parrying is bad. Like they don't want to make parrying good, which is why it goes through a giant overhaul in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. But New Gen's a really fascinating game. Because once again, you see like, this is this is an example of where you see the bones of where Street Fighter 3 is eventually going to go to turn it into something really successful. But New Gen doesn't make it, right? And this is arguably one of the most forgotten Street Fighter games of all of them. I remember hearing something along the lines of they only sold around 2,000 arcade machines of regular Street Fighter 3. It was that unpopular. Some dramatically low number coming from Capcom USA at the time. So there was a big panic of just, what the hell do we even do? Anytime I saw a Street Fighter 3 machine, I just don't remember people ever playing it. But it sets up for something great, and that's what's important, and that's what we kind of figure out about the majority of these old school Capcom fighting games, is that they're not willing to stop, even though everything and sales are telling them to stop. Funny enough, Capcom Arcade Division in this time frame just keeps pushing forward. And it doesn't help that in this time frame, Capcom fighting games are beyond busted. We tried to do some infinites. The first one was with Ibuki. 
And Hibuki has sort of a hilarious one, which sets up after a super, and her close range stand HK just loops over and over and over again until you get stunned, and then you get hit for another combo, and then you die. So I, I have to get close. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? It can't be that easy, dude. The stun damage in the game is friggin' ridiculous, man. Characters will hit you for so few hits and you just, half your stun bar is eaten. And then the next combo you take, you're dead. The Busted Brothers, Yun and Yang, are palette swaps in this game. They're the exact same character. You just press kicks to get Yang. But funny enough, they get an aerial target combo, light punch to light kick, that is not in any of the Street Fighter 3s. It's only in this one. And yeah, if you miss the second hit of the target combo, you can just launch him again and do it again and launch him again and do it again and then they're stunned and then combo into death. This game's fucked up. This game's fucked up. There was a lot of issues. Some characters were ridiculously god tier at the beginning of this game's existence and it wouldn't get fixed till quite a bit later. Ow! You got cut off. Nobody gives a shit. So that takes us into Second Impact. Street Fighter III uh, Second Impact Giant Attack, as is also known in Japan. We finally get a few other characters. This is the first introduction of Yurian. First introduction of Hugo. And to do something different than I've never done before, I wanted to play Hugo, because I heard Hugo also has a ridiculous infinite in this game. Launching command grab, you can get medium clap and the medium clap and the medium clap all over the place. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this is broken. Funny enough, my perspective on second impact is a bit better. Right? I, I remember watching people around even the Street Fighter 3 time frame when Third Strike wasn't the most popular game yet. A lot of people liked Second Impact, and even it had its fair share of an audience in the arcade at the time frame next to Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Second Impact definitely is like right there with 3S. You get new gen, and it feels really far and disconnected from what the Street Fighter 3 series is known for later on, but new gen is kinda close. And it has some ridiculously top tier godlike characters. Sean and Ibuki in this one are, are, are ridiculous, and I think Sean was also ridiculous in new gen. So it's very top tier dominant. And we wanted just to mess around with Hugo to see how crazy his bullshit is. And I've never played Hugo, and yeah, setting up his infinites is really not that hard. But funny enough, Hugo, as I understand, is, is low tier as hell. He's actually kinda bad in this game. Uh-oh. But you get sort of a similar experience. You get a couple of new stages, some minor alterations to colors to stages, but a lot of what you're playing is fairly familiar to Street Fighter 3 New Gen. The music's a little bit different too, but it feels kind of like this is an update to the new gen. This isn't really a new game, it's an update to new generation. But we also get another brand new character to the series. This is the first time Akuma shows up in a Street Fighter 3. And he is also effing crazy. Doesn't have his demon flip, has a really goofy Dark Souls role, but the guy's dive kick is punishable beyond belief. And his uh, Goryasin, his crazy up kick super is insanely easy to combo into and very damaging. And I remember watching people play this character and doing this up Tatsu super all the time in the arcade back in the day, so. Wow, threw a jab. Oh, dude, this, this anti-throw shit is dumb. The game's also got some really weird quirks to it. And this was always fascinating to me when the we were playing the arcade versions of Second Impact way back in the day. But yeah, there's a widescreen mode in Second Impact where the game, for some reason, supports 16x9 widescreen. It's not recommended. It actually changes the way the entire friggin' game plays because you get Injustice-style screens. Characters, when they activate supers, if you do them from the corners, it'll, like, shift them to the middle of the screen because it's not designed for that. But it's bizarre to see a game from 98 
have widescreen support and especially a 2D game at that. We wouldn't see the likes of this until Street Fighter 4 and Tatsunoko versus Capcom much later on, but it's it's just a weird setting that's in the dip switch of Second Impact that allows you to see widescreen and man, I don't know who the hell would have had that until we play the game now, but it's very pretty and it's cool to see all the wonderful giant backgrounds, but not something I recommend to play overall. There's a, there's an insane boss fight. Gil is usually a really pain in the ass boss in all of these games. Notorious, he has resurrection in every single one. But back in the day when we were doing previous legacies for other characters, we did try to find Shin Akuma in Second Impact. And there is a whole bunch of parameters you have to use to eventually get to him. And he's a ridiculous boss fight, just like previous versions of Akuma. I really dig it when Akuma is a super top tier boss fight in, in fighting games. And this is, I believe, the second time we would get Shin Akuma as a boss fight outside of Alpha 2. It's a nice addition, and I think it's fairly dope, but Akuma as himself is just a regular selectable character, and he's, he's god tier as it is. He's already a ridiculously good character. Get the fuck over here! Get the fuck over here! So these kind of like busted versions of New Generation and Second Impact wouldn't go on forever. Weirdly enough, the arcade versions of people that like these games are the ones that they stick with because there was a home port. On Dreamcast, I rented Street Fighter 3 Double Impact or W Impact in Japan. And this contains not Third Strike, but just Street Fighter 3 New Gen and Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. So you get the first two of the Street Fighter 3 games. The first thing I wanted to check getting into this is what was different. And this is obviously like a CPS3 game. So how how different is this stuff going to be? And they fix a lot of stuff. And from what I understand, the people that like playing some of these games like Second Impact do not like playing this version because they patch the Hugo thing from Second Impact. They patch the Ibuki launch thing from New Generation and they patch the aerial target combo infinite from Yun and Yang. So that's a weird thing that we sort of start to notice with a lot of fighting games around this time frame. And we talked about it with Alpha 3, how a lot of players, when your characters are nerfed or some cool tech that they find is taken away, they'll just stick with the old version of the game. And this also echoes to other Capcom fighting games around the time frame, like X-Men vs. Street Fighter. That game got a notorious patch for some of its corner infinites that the characters had. And most people like going back to the original one, where characters get all these absolutely batshit crazy corner infinites. So this is sort of like a sentiment that's echoed from this point forward. And it's ultimately why games like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike do not get updated in the long run. And eventually, a lot of these Street Fighter 3 games after this never see actual changes outside of a couple of things. So that's about the end of Second Impact, but I still think it's a great game. I still think it is comparable to Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and it's also a game that renders new generation almost useless. <laughs> Piece of shit! Whoa, bitch! Eat all this shit! Yeah, there we go. All right. So the greatest game of all time. I mean, what do I even need to tell you about Street Fighter 3 Third Strike? It was one of my first earliest competitive fighting games. I spent the most time with it of all the games I did play competitively when I was in my early 20s and teens. The game is just beautiful. I think it's still one of the best feeling fighting games of all time. But there's a lot of interesting elements to Third Strike over the years because a lot of ways the game is played has been defined as far as that being the way it is. You know, Yoon being a god tier character. We get Chun-Li, Makoto, Remy, Q, and 12. And a lot of these characters are just returning roster, so like almost everybody from the previous games is playable outside of Gil. It's fascinating how you can go from one end of the spectrum, which is like one of the most top tier Street Fighter characters ever, which is Chun-Li and Yoon, but not new to the game. Makoto's super good, really good character. And then the worst character in the game is 12, almost like a joke, right? But the actual joke was Sean. And this has been admitted by Capcom employees. Sean was really good in New Gen and Second Impact. So much so that Capcom realizes that they messed up and Sean was never supposed to be a really good character. His place in the roster was to be a Dan-like and not as good as the other Shotos because he's still in training. They specifically go ham. They go absolutely ham on Sean in this game and they make sure he's bad. <laughs> Compared to the other Shotos, Ryuken and Akuma, 
He's got the tools that they have in some ways, but they're all just worse. The frame data is worse. The hit advantage is significantly like diminished from the other characters. They just go ham on this poor kid. And this is the beginning of Sean kind of being bad, right? And that's unfortunate because he's he's really fun in previous games. He's got all, all the crazy stuff that you've seen him do and they actually specifically just remove it in this one. It's sad, but there's also some interesting like things that they do to the, the roster here. That is fun. Ken is obviously like Mr. Third Strike, one of like the easiest characters to pick up in the game, but also one of the hardest to actually actually be really good with. Yoon has an infinite skill ceiling where if you want to do stuff with Yoon, man, you'll always be learning shit, man. And then you get other characters like Yurian that is just absolute gameplay expression 101. What you want to do with Yurian is up to your execution and how much time you want to put into it. And that was one thing I did want to challenge myself. I was like, I never learned ridiculous things like the charge partitioning that you can do with Yurian, which is to take a charge and then apply it a bit later or after an action so that you can specifically set up for really cool things like unblockable Aegis setups. And it kind of, it makes Yurian a really good character. And I took it upon myself to try to like learn this because I never actually learned it. I tried it a couple of times back in the arcade way back in the day but sitting in third strike training mode is something i haven't done a lot of and we spent some time to do it and it took a while man but i eventually got it a couple of times and it's tough it is a legit difficult strategy to dash forward and get that headbutt to cross up it takes so much less charge than you think i almost wish it took more but the fact that like, you have to like hold back is is stupid the fact that you have to like wait a, a ton is dumb There you go. It's fascinating because that is applied to every other charge character in the game and kind of makes them really interesting how you can apply the charge mechanic because Third Strike and Street Fighter 3 already feels like a game that just says F you to charge characters because you have to parry, right? And it's not the case. I don't know if this was made intentionally, but it definitely gives some of the charge characters some sauce. And it's it's fascinating to see how deep the iceberg goes when it comes to all this charge partitioning stuff. And then in the end, I really wanted to also try some big combos with Yoon. I've barely ever put in any training time to Yoon in an actual training mode. And we did it. We finally landed some big Yoon combos. Thank God they're not even hard. They're, they're from like the mid 2000s that I remember when we were playing these characters. It was just fun to to revisit some of this stuff and see how how we do in a training mode setting. Uh, that's the one, boy. But that's not the end of Third Strike. This is the this is all related to like the arcade, the core arcade version of the game. But there are other versions technically. We tried the Dreamcast version, and this is largely known to be the worst version of Street Fighter III Third Strike. On a casual level, it's absolutely fine. There's really nothing wrong with this game, and it will play similar enough to what you remember in the arcades just fine. But there's a couple of really minute details that fans of Street Fighter III Third Strike do not like. The first biggest one that I could go in and try and see what they actually changed was Yurian and they removed Yurian's unblockable setup. So intentional or not, I'm going to assume it is like intentional because they know that these things exist by the time the Dreamcast version comes out. And this is technically a patched version of Third Strike. The crossover unblockables that Yurian gets with Aegis and Oro might get with the Yagyu Dama Super, I think is what it's called. Uh, they're gone. So people that play those characters are legit pissed and certain things that work a certain way are just kind of off. I hear parries are off. People are saying that there is added input delay in the Dreamcast version. So list largely goes down as a really bad port of Third Strike that not many people like. Granted, Casually, just fine. You'll have a great time. But when you come down to the nitty gritty, there's a few things that they change that really alter high level play of the game. So it's just not played at all when it comes to tournaments. And if you're talking Dreamcast, yeah, CBS2, Marvel 2, totally fine. Not Third Strike though. Don't touch that shit with a 10 foot pole. So we would not get a home port of Third Strike an actual home port of Third Strike that was relatively close to the arcade until 2000 friggin' five. And we've checked out this version several times. Um, it is the 15th anniversary collection, the same one that had Super Turbo. Yes, it took that long for us to officially get a good Super Turbo at home and also a good version of Third Strike. It took till 2005 for that 15th anniversary collection. And yeah, it's great. This is the version of the game that I played a ton. Got most of my experience from playing online matches on the Xbox with Street Fighter 3 Third Strike around this time frame. 
online. And uh, even though the online was balls trash, I got a lot of experience and character matchup knowledge by doing it. And that's kind of what it's all about. And I just applied that to the arcade and got better at the arcade as well. This is a great port. And this is a port made specifically for the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox by Capcom internal. And their goal was to finally give people a version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike and Super Turbo that they can have at home that isn't that different from the other versions because a lot of people complained about the other versions and collections and Third Strike on Dreamcast, stuff like that. So it's great, right? Th this is now the new competitive standard for Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Evo is using it. We don't have to use arcade hardware anymore. It's the definitive way to go. And now the main competitive element for multiple Capcom fighting games. No, oh, Jesus! This guy, I cannot play. I cannot play around. I got fucking double perfected by fucking Hugo. But it doesn't end there because the code that would be applied from the PS2 version of Third Strike and the Xbox 360 is used for a quote-unquote remaster in 2011 called Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition. And y'all are gonna remember this one because for several years, this was the basis of Third Strike the Online Warrior on my channel. This was the main one I went towards because it was easiest to get people on it. Fightcade wasn't, I'd say, as usable as it was. This version of the game is honestly amazing. It's the most feature rich and has the most things in a Street Fighter 3 game ever made. And the reason is they redo music, they redo artwork, they redo menus, they redo audio. It's kind of crazy to go and play an emulation or the anniversary collection of Third Strike and realize how chunky and compressed the audio is because the CPS3 board was not great with audio. It was all visual. And man, the remastered audio in Third Strike Online Edition is beautiful. It's got rollback netcode. It's got functioning lobbies. Like this was the way I played Third Strike for a very long time. It's got additional colors. There's a ridiculous amount of super cool shit in this version of the game, and I honestly love it. I wish it would come back in some way. Some people complain that it's like half a frame off, which is comparable to what the PS2 version is, which is a weird thing to say. Some things are slightly different in this version, but it's minor, right? It's nowhere near the level of the Dreamcast version or anything like that. But still, a lot of super hardcore players will stick to the Fightcade version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike because it is getting better and better as the years go on and less and less input delay. Really what's sad is that Online Edition is still very playable. You can play it on your Xbox 360. You can play it on your PlayStation 3, but it never became backwards compatible in any way, which is a friggin' tragedy, absolute tragedy, because Iron Galaxy knocked it out of the park with this port. It's got trials, it's got everything. Man, You can actually take music from new gen and second generation and literally jukebox mode the game if you wanted to. It feels like a true love letter to Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So if there's one thing I really hope for in the future is that my favorite fighting game can get the love and care once again that they put into Online Edition in something that's playable on modern systems in some way. Because while it is nice that the anniversary collection, the 30th anniversary collection, did include Third Strike, this largely goes down as a version that not a lot of people like because Anniversary Collection for the 30th has a lot of input delay. And the online is not nearly as good as the rollback netcode setup that Iron Galaxy made back in Online Edition and what people already have for free with Fightcade. So that's where we stand. The greatest fighting game of all time. If you want to play it right now, the most accessible and easy way you can do it is to jump onto Fightcade, go into the lobby, and you can always find 200 to 500 people playing Third Strike. It's crazy, man. It is the number one place for the competition of this game in the world. And luckily enough, you can actually still run into brand new players, which is genuinely incredible considering this game's from 1999 and is now getting close on 25 years old so in my opinion as i just went in and did some things that i have never done before in third strike it's still the greatest fighting game of all time and i doubt anything is going to take that title from it anytime soon resurrection you know what they say the third strike is what counts you know hate you can't get into don't think that i can't knock you out, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out.